okay so i think it started so i i hope my slides are visible can anyone confirm it yes sir yes <coughs> somebody is asking for admit okay sir any idea about our date sheet uh, not yet but i will ask to the examination department okay sir okay okay so <clears throat> uh, we are discussing about unit 4 and in unit 4 we have already discussed about ibd that is inflammatory bowel disease and under ibd we have discussed about crohn disease and ulcerative colitis we have already uh, discussed about jaundice hepatitis uh, alcoholic liver disease also we have covered so uh, today's lectures we are going to cover the disease of bones and joint rheumatoid arthritis gout and osteoporosis and osteoarthritis so uh, these we have already discussed so i am not going to repeat it again so what actually the ibd is what are the different types of ibd uh, what are the etiology of ibd we have already covered epidemiology uh, uh, whether uh, ulcerative colitis is more prevalent or crohn disease is more prevalent in which area it's more prevalent and we have discussed about its pathogenesis as it's a autoimmune disorder so we have discussed how immune system is not able to recognize our own body cells and when it happen and what comes uh, liver disease uh, what actually the jaundice uh, what is its etiology what is its pathogenesis and how to diagnose the jaundice someone is asking for admit <coughs> so uh, how we diagnose the jaundice what uh, test liver function test we are doing and uh, by these test or uh, on the basis of symptoms we will get a sense which type of jaundice uh, uh, person is suffering and uh, depending upon the underlying cause we are giving the treatment we have covered the hepatitis and uh, in hepatitis what are the different types of hepatitis what are the etiology of hepatitis different types of hepatitis a b c d e and what is the pathogenesis how virus enters in the bodies and after entering in the bodies what are the different phases and what uh, what uh, 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 symptoms will be appear in the patients what uh, uh, what changes is happens in the blood or other biological fluids the diagnosis uh, how to diagnose the hepatitis and what how we can prevent the hepatitis and what treatment we can given alcoholic liver disease ald we have already covered what is its etiology what are the different types <coughs> sorry fatty liver hepatitis liver cirrhosis and uh, liver cancer pathogenesis we have discussed uh, and how uh, these ethanol is metabolized in the bodies and what happens when person is taking uh, excess of alcohols or uh, uh, doing the continuous use of the alcohol how it's damaging our liver and uh, how this liver damage is uh, results into a irreversible damage uh, where we have no other options we have to go for a liver transplant and uh, these treatments we have discussed so today's uh, we are going to discuss about disease of the bones and joints and uh, you know in uh, with respect to uh, disease of bone and joint pain is now a very common in our population and uh, there are a many reason for it <coughs> so uh lifestyle is the one of the reasons uh, now uh, we are doing uh, uh, most of the jobs are sitting jobs and continuously we are sitting so it results in the joint pains uh, so what are the different <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry so uh, what are the different uh, disease of uh, bones and joints uh, so you know uh, you can see on your screen arthritis is the one of the major problems and arthritis is of many types and uh, the we uh, in medical terms if you see the different types of arth uh, arthritis you will find there are more than 200 types of arthritis are 
so uh, what are the major arthritis uh, so arthritis itis means inflammation so it's a inflammations of the joints and uh, there is a uh, in arthritis there is a osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis and gout arthritis so these are the different types of arthritis and uh, there are a different reason for each arthritis so you can see in these figures uh, uh, one figure is of osteoarthritis another figure uh, which shows about the rheumatoid arthritis and one is uh, describing about the gout so you can see the first pictures this side uh, this is the osteoarthritis conditions you can see in joints between the joints there is a uh, there is a fluid that we call a cartilage so within the age when age uh, 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 is increased so within the age this cartilage is uh, uh, is that the production of cartilage is decreased or cartilage is destroyed so due to that they, uh, there is a friction between the bones and when person is uh, uh, a person is moving or uh, uh, moving the joints it leads to a severe pain so that we call a osteoarthritis this we call a wear and tear damage due to wear and tear damage of the joints these osteoarthritis conditions will happen and about us osteoarthritis is mainly affect the joints only it's uh, uh, it's not affecting other part of the body but whereas in case of rheumatoid arthritis it's a autoimmune disease and you know we have discussed about ibd is also the one of the autoimmune and there are many autoimmune diseases you know so type 1 diabetes is autoimmune disease sle systemic lupus erythematosus is a autoimmune disorder rheumatoid arthritis is autoimmune disorder and autoimmune disorder you all know what actually the meaning of autoimmune disorder autoimmune disorder are the disorder where our immune cells is not able to recognize our own body cells and start killing these our own body cells and it results in the uh, inflammations and uh, uh, you you know when we have discussed about inflammation what happen in inflammations the joints will be warm joint joint swelling will happen pain will be there so all these symptoms of inflammations will be appears in the persons and that we call the rheumatoid arthritis where the uh, immune system is attacking our own uh, own body cells so uh, and third is gout the gout is uh, the uh, is happen due to uh, disorders in the metabolism of the purine where these uric acid is deposit in the joints and uh, excess depositions of uric acids will uh, create a problems it will results in a inflammations so there is a these are the uh, basically in a generalized way different types of uh, uh, arthritis one is osteoarthritis uh, which happens particularly in the older age uh, whereas rheumatoid arthritis can happen at any age uh, we uh, we have seen many cases uh, where children are also getting a rheumatoid arthritis but in osteoarthritis majorly affected population is older age but yes some uh, persons who are doing the overuse of their joints heavy exercises wear and tear means some uh, some uh, uh, problem to the uh, joints or something infection is there so in that case we are seeing the osteoarthritis in early uh, early phases also but most of the times it's a older age disease but in rheumatoid arthritis it can happen to <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry uh, it can happen to, uh, to uh, any age and uh, gout is basically the metabolism disorders where uric acid is deposit your uric acid is not excreted from the bodies or excess of uh, uric acids productions is deposit in the joints and it results in the uh, arthritis so these are the different uh, types of arthritis so etiology what what are the reason why this arthritis is happen so uh, there is a of course there is a genetic factors but genetic factor doesn't means the persons uh, who uh, uh, whose parents or who's uh, uh, in the relative have some uh, uh, are suffering from arthritis that persons will also definitely will uh, suffer from arthritis in their uh, uh, life it's not like that genetic factor means these factors will contribute and along with genetic factors your environmental factors will play a major role so if the person uh, is more susceptible for the development of arthritis and exposed to these environmental changes the environmental changes like uh, pollutions like uh, smoking so these are the risk factors so with these risk factors and you are genetically already the genetically susceptible 
so that disease will be developed in early uh, early phases or later phases of the life so uh, the environmental changes of course uh, day by day year by year uh, pollution is increasing so these pollutions uh, we are inhaling and these micro particles are deposited in the lungs and in the lungs they do the structural changes in the proteins <clears throat> and due to changes in the structure of the uh, our own body proteins our immune systems uh, think it's a non self it's not the our body's part so it attack on uh, these proteins and results in an autoimmune disorder it creates a uh, auto antibodies right so uh, and you all knows what is the process to generations of the antibodies in the bodies so uh, lifestyle changes of course lack of exercise when we are not doing a exercises and uh, someone uh, is doing heavy exercises or exercises not under supervision so it also results in a uh, in a joint problems fast foods or other things also contribute these all are the uh, risk factors or contributors for the development of arthritis obesity is also the one of the problems particularly uh, with osteoarthritis if the person is obese uh, so there is a chances that persons could results in osteoarthritis because load on the joints will be increased much more than the person is obese and these large joints knee joints these uh, will uh, be a lot, uh, lot of a uh, lot of weight so it uh, definitely do the destruction to the cartilage <clears throat> so these are the etiology epidemiology uh, if you ask uh, which population is more suffering from these arthritis so of course women are more prone uh, for the development of rheumatoid arthritis uh, also the joint problems are more common with women and the reason is uh, due to their uh, their makeup their uh, uh, female hormones like estrogens are the contributors the uh, osteoarthritis is a common problems if you ask uh, among all these arthritis which one is most common so osteoarthritis is most common problem and as i told you rheumatoid arthritis can happen at any age whereas osteoarthritis is of older age disease so this is about epidemiology uh, now <clears throat> pathogenesis uh, uh, so one by one uh, first we uh, i will show you what is the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis so you can see a uh, single large traumatic events or repeated micro trauma what will happens uh, sometimes uh, some damage will happen to the joints or some accident has been happen it could also results in the uh, osteoarthritis by damage to the uh, cartilage uh, so damage to the normal articular uh, cartilage under the normal loading Uh, so it will damage single uh, the single large traumatic event repeated micro trauma will damage to the normal articular cartilage cartilage under normal loading so uh, this is the one thing uh, another reason is genetic anomaly in the cartilage production means cartilage is not produced uh, that much is required and inborn error in the cartilage metabolism so it also results in the destructions of the cartilage and ultimately results in the formations of osteoarthritis so failure of abnormal cartilage and the normal joint loading so it result in destructions uh, destructions and attrition of articular cartilage and these are the ehlers danlos this is a genetic disorders in which uh, the uh, particularly the connective tissues are affected so of course bone is uh, affected familiar hypermobility syndrome where due to genetic problems the person is more uh, prone to these joint problems these are the conditions where Uh, all these conditions will let, uh, results in the destructions or at uh, at reason of particular damage and results in the uh, formations of osteoarthritis and results in the condition of osteoarthritis so osteoarthritis can occur in the both load bearing joint knee hip as i told you mainly osteoarthritis is affecting the uh, main joints but <clears throat> not only uh, only the major joint but also the smaller joint also affected pip joints your uh, uh, hand joints cmc joints in the hands these all are so affected in the osteoarthritis so repeated physical joint trauma repeatedly you are doing a heavy exercise without the supervision proper supervision you are you can create a bear and tear and as i told you osteoarthritis is a bear and tear problem so what will happen synovial fluid force to the bones damage to the subchondrial blood vessels subchondrial fractures and these all will result in the stimulation of noce receptors in the subchondrial bone and these will send the signal to the brain and you will sense a pain 
so when the person is uh, moving their joints it will complain i am getting a pain so this is a one thing another thing is aberrant uh, bone deposition can lead to be around some chondral bone of course formation of osteophytes and some chondral sclerosis disruptions of normal joint architecture and palpable bone hypertrophies like nodes will be formed which are nodes will be formed in the hand it has been observed in many uh, patients of osteoarthritis so impaction of osteophytes with normal joint structure during the movement pain will happens with the motions and decrease with the uh, decrease in the motions the uh, practice will happens lack of cartilage means direct contact the practice means when person will move the joints there is a sound will comes a uh, jerky sounds jab person uth raha hai baith raha hai to ek sounds jab aayega that be called practice uh, joint movement with reduced lubrication stimulate joint nerve receptors so of course it will results in the pain inflammations will also uh, play a little bit role in the osteoarthritis not that much which is uh, uh, we have seen in uh, rheumatoid arthritis so as i told you osteoarthritis means Uh, uh between the bones there is a cartilage so this cartilage uh, will be decreased and due to decrease in the cartilage and cartilage will be uh, much more reduced so bone will be uh, uh, will be strike with each other so when you will uh, move the joints so these will strike and it will results in the pain right so it will uh, create uh, it will affect the daily life so all these uh, these uh, are the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis so pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis as i told you rheumatoid arthritis is genetic reasons so there are hla drb1 or strata4 or many others genes <clears throat> if the person have these genes so that means that person is more susceptible but that doesn't mean this that persons will 100% or definitely will uh, get rheumatoid arthritis no it's not like that it's uh i mean so with the uh, interactions of genetic factors with the environmental triggers it could results in the development of rheumatoid arthritis so environmental factors like uh, uh the infections hello smoking yes har uh, hormones ha main thodi der mein baat karu main class chal rahi hai 1 baje 1 baje ek baje environmental triggers infection smoking sex hormones as i told you females are more prone due to estrogen uh, smoking is also the one of the triggering factors macrophages so uh, if you see these uh, these pathogenesis so uh, there is no need to worry to see these uh, all these uh, complex words or whatever so just remember what happen in a autoimmune disease what happens how immune cell uh, when uh, activate or hyperactivation of immune cells then what will happen so automatically that is a mechanism of your rheumatoid arthritis also so if you see macrophages and dendritic cells you know how uh, these immune cells innate immune cells uh, present antigen to the adaptive immune immune system so, and adaptive immune system part is t cells so then after the presentations t cell activation and proliferations will happen and activated t cells you all knows produce the inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 6 uh, tnf alpha tu uh, tumor necrosis factors and it stimulate the b cell differenti uh, differentiation into plasma cells and it will produce antibodies and that antibody will produce against our own body cells that is a problem so this is a mechanism you know so, and it will uh, uh, further uh, results in decrease in production of hyaluronic a major lubricant in the synovial fluid inflammation will increase there is a mmp matrix metalloprotease so that productions uh, that uh, enzymes uh, will increased uh, production will increase much more and increase in mmp will do the cartilage damage so in rheumatoid arthritis also these all inflammation is there and ultimately it do damage to the joints it do the cartilage damage it uh, uh, produce the auto antibodies against these uh, uh, synovial membranes or fluids everywhere it will do the attack so plasma cell antibodies from the immune complex in terror damage the cartilage so joint damage recruit neutrophil t cell b cell into the fusing hyperplasia angiogenesis of synovial membrane and finally uh, if you are not uh, giving the treatment to the uh, to the patient so what will happens the entire body is affected in the rheumatoid arthritis and why it is so the reason is because there is a inflammation and inflammation is something which is if your Uh, t cells b cells are hyperactive so it's not go only going to affect your joints 
it's going to affect every part of the body so that's why rheumatoid arthritis is i mean uh, you you have to be diagnose it as early as possible and start the treatment you can't ignore it whereas in osteoarthritis inflammations is not play that much role so inflammation is very less in uh, osteoarthritis but in rheumatoid arthritis you will get uh, a lot of inflammations right so uh, with the inflammations and with these changes you can see in these what changes will uh, you will observe in a patient's uh, uh, blood or uh, patient symptoms so initially when these activated t cells uh, uh, produce these uh, cytokines inflammatory cytokine so these plasma cell often produce a characteristic antibody during this phase and these antibodies you can detect in the blood of the patients so this is a accp anticytic citrullinemic peptide you will uh, when you will uh, do a blood test you you if its level is increased you will get a sense yes it might be a rheumatoid, a rheumatoid arthritis the rheumatoid factors will be uh, there but again it doesn't mean if someone go for a blood test and uh, that person is detected rheumatoid factor positive so it doesn't means that person is uh, uh, having a rheumatoid arthritis it may or may not be because it has been observed that in normal uh, persons also rheumatoid factors uh, you can detect in the blood so these are not very specific markers that means we have to be do another diagnosis also when we are rule out uh, the patients for a rheumatoid arthritis on the basis of this one you you can't say and what happen actually when uh, someone go to the clinic or uh, hospital and nowadays in laboratories uh, uh, these in reports in laboratory reports uh, means uh, everyone is educated so they they can get to know this is the reference value this is okay uh, i got rheumatoid factor positive so uh, patients will be afraid okay i i have a rheumatoid arthritis and physician is not starting the medication and physician is not confirming it so it uh, you know it doesn't mean so always it's always advisable you have to go to the experts who can diagnose it uh, uh, proper in a proper way and then start the treatment so uh, as inflammation in the body so you know so crp will increase but again crp is increased in many conditions whenever in body there is inflammation crp will be increased but it's not very specific uh, uh, this inflammation is in the joints or is in uh, uh, is in the brain or is in the any other part esr erythrocyte sedimentation rate if increased so we are uh, suspecting the persons might have a rheumatoid arthritis so these uh, another arthralgia joint pain especially in small joints palatable joint infusion swelling uh, you you can see on a x ray enlarged uh, bony joints joint stiffness so all these you have to be see all these with these symptoms and these lab tests then you will say that yes this person have a rheumatoid arthritis right and another one is uh, gouty arthritis gout means as i told you it's a metabolism problem so disorder of urine metabolism uh, what will it results it's a hyperuricemia so serum uric acids when you will go for a test if uric acid level is increased much more so it's that condition we called a hyperuricemia but hyperuricemia doesn't means uh, the you will get a gout but if it's not treated if uh, your diet is not controlled uh, then it will uh, increase amount of serum uric acids will convert into a urate uh, crystal and it will deposit in a synovial fluid and due to low solubility of uric acid of affective joint mostly uh, a great top and ultimately when something will stuck in the joints again our immune system will sense it and inflammatory responses will initiated in the joints and there is a uh, the persons will get a, uh, a pain or all the symptoms of inflammation but again when some if you are diagnosing a patients with a gouty arthritis or if you are diagnosing a patients with a rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis their treatment we are starting accordingly right so diagnosis <clears throat> on the basis of symptoms you know uh, uh, is uh, affecting mainly the joints so uh, as i told you there are a, broadly there are two types of arthritis one category is inflammatory and one is non inflammatory so non inflammatory is osteoarthritis as i told you in osteoarthritis inflammations have very less role and inflammatory arthritis is your rheumatoid arthritis and gouty arthritis in gout also when uric acid crystal will deposit in the joints your inflammatory responses will increase right so uh, 
on the basis of symptoms uh, as uh, and you all knows what are the symptoms of inflammation when someone comes with a pain in the joints if you touch the uh, joint you will feel it's a burn you will feel it's a redness you will feel it's a pain when someone is touching these joints so you will get these are the signs cardinal signs of the uh, 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 inflammation as you uh, if you remember when we have discussed about unit 2 what are the signs of inflammation so you you can get a uh, sense from the symptoms which type of arthritis this patient have so uh, in rheumatoid arthritis uh, if the persons have uh, suffering from a osteoarthritis their uh, joints will not become redness is not there swelling is not there a uh, pain is there pain is uh, common in both but uh, swelling these uh, uh, redness will be less right so on the basis of that one you can differentiate this is the one thing another thing is on the basis of symptom how you can differentiate patients will say okay uh, when i am i uh, i am moving or i am uh, using the joints i am getting a pain uh, you will get this is the case of osteoarthritis whereas in rheumatoid arthritis patient will say there is a morning stiffness but when i start moving or start using the joints my pain will be uh, uh, will be resolved in case of rheumatoid arthritis in osteoarthritis it will be reverse the patient will say when i am uh, using the joints or when i am moving i am getting pain but but when i am doing the rest uh, there is no pain i am uh, comfortable so from these symptoms you can get a sense which type of arthritis the patient have right uh, along with these symptoms as i told you we are uh, doing the laboratory test esr in the blood rheumatoid factors ana anti nuclear antibody anti cyclic citronellic peptide and uric acids to differentiate uh, uh, to get a more clear pictures uh, how much severe condition is and by imaging imaging is most appropriate technique for the diagnosis of the bone and you knows whenever someone is going with the joint problems to the physicians the first thing physician will say x ray karwa lo ye imaging karwao then they will get a clear picture okay if there is a problem of cartilage or there is a inflammation from inflammation you will get uh, these laboratory tests so this is the diagnosis and as i told you on the basis of diagnosis of the patients we are providing the treatment to the patients so uh, if you see the prescription of rheumatoid arthritis patient you will find dmrd these are we call a disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs uh, like your uh, fluoxetine methotrexate uh, lecunamide there are many drugs which we are using uh, for the rheumatoid arthritis and uh, in rheumatoid arthritis we are also depending upon the condition of patients we are also using the steroids and why steroids because as if you remember as i told you steroids are powerful anti inflammatory agents very powerful anti inflammatory and you know if the uh, condition of patient is worse uh, inflammation is very high so you have no options you have to use the steroids at the low dose depending upon the condition of the patient uh, sometime we are using the higher dose then we are going for a low dose sometime we are using a low dose and then go for a higher so depending upon the condition of patients we are using the steroids also and some patients if not responding to dmard or steroids then we are using a biological agents also the problem with biological agents is like antibodies we are using so problem with biological agents is these are costly and uh, uh, very uh, means uh, uh, but nowadays many uh, many things uh, many uh, regulation has been changed and government is focusing on biosimilar so biosimilar are the generic version of biological agent so uh, generic as you know generic will be less costly so uh, it will be uh, affordable to everyone so biological agents we are using nasaid we are using uh, pain killers patients are using for osteoarthritis patients and genthin oxidase inhibitor we are using for the uh, gouty arthritis as i told you gouty arthritis means uric acid is deposit in the joint so we want the drugs which will reduce the production of uric acid so genthin oxidase is a one of the enzymes if you see the uh, cycle of uric acid production maybe you have studied in biochemistry class so there is a genthin oxidase enzymes which helps in the production of uric acid so we have a drugs which we are like well known drug is allopurinol so with, uh, what it do it inhibit this enzyme so due to inhibition of this enzyme this hypogenthin will not convert into genthin and then finally not into a uric acid and if uric acid will not form it will not uh, uh, deposit 
there is another another drugs also uricosiroxid means they are uh, they are uh, uh, they are uh, uh, increasing the excretion of uric acid from the urine so otherwise this uric acid will reabsorb from the urine system so we have uh, some drugs which will block the reabsorption of uric acid which also we are using for a gouty uh, gouty arthritis but for the gouty arthritis not for your osteo or rheumatoid in rheumatoid arthritis we have to use the disease modifying the you know, rheumatoid and their mechanism is they are immunosuppressive they will uh, suppress your immune system because immune system is hyperactive so we want a uh, some agents which will suppress the immune system physical therapies we are using particularly for the osteoarthritis uh, some exercises physiotherapy you know uh, has a major a uh, very important role when we are talking about a uh, problems uh, with respect to joints so these exercises everything will help uh, and if uh, there is a uh, means uh, problem is very uh, severe and cartilage is completely lost so we can go for a joint replacement surgery so this is about the disorder of joints so if i <coughs> explain in hindi little bit सो आर्थराइटस जैसे मैंने आपको बताया आर्थराइटस जो कहाँ की बीमारी है आपकी ज्वाइंट्स की प्रॉब्लम है बट आर्थराइटस में भी बहुत सारे आर्थराइटस हैं रिमेटोइड आर्थराइटस अगर आप एक पूरी बुक इतनी बड़ी बुक है रिमेटोइड आर्थराइटस पे उस पर आप देखोगे तो 200 या 300 सौ रिमेटोइड तरह के रिमेटोइड आर्थराइटस हैं तो ब्रॉडली जो है वो आर्थराइटस हम कैटागराइज करते हैं एक इन्फ्लामेटरी आर्थराइटस एक नॉन इन्फ्लामेटरी नॉन इन्फ्लामेटरी अर्थराइटिस का क्लासिकल एग्जाम्पल है ऑस्टियोर्थराइटिस तो ऑस्टियोर्थराइटिस मीन्स इसमें इन्फ्लामेशन का उतना रोल नहीं है तो इसमें होता क्या है ऑस्टियोर्थराइटिस में तो आपको पता है ज्वाइंट्स जो आपने अनाटमी और फिजियोलॉजी पढ़ी है सबने कि ज्वाइंट्स में क्या क्या चीज़ें होती हैं साइनोवियल मेम्ब्रेन क्या फ्लूड होता है कार्टिलेज होता है उसका क्या काम है ज्वाइंट्स कैसे मूव करते हैं तो ये जो कार्टिलेज जो होता है धीरे धीरे एज के साथ इसकी प्रोडक्शन कम होने लगती है और कुछ ट्रिगरिंग फैक्टर की वजह से जब कार्टिलेज आपका बिल्कुल कम हो गया तो क्या होगा इसके अंदर फ्लूड है आपके ज्वाइंट्स के अंदर तो जब आप मूव करोगे तो ये फ्रिक्शन करेगा तो ज्वाइंट पेन होगी जैसे ज्वाइंट को सीधा करना है या पेशेंट को खड़ा होना है बैठना है तो उसे नहीं बैठा जाएगा ऑस्टियोथेराइटिस का अगर उसमें पूरी तरह कार्टिलेज खत्म हो गया तो उस केस में आपका उसको हम कंडीशन को बोलते हैं ऑस्टियोथेराइटिस और ये एक एकदम से आपका कार्टिलेज नहीं खत्म होगा इसमें टाइम लगेगा धीरे धीरे इससे ग्रेजुअल प्रोसेस धीरे 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 एज के साथ तो हम 60 साल पैंसठ साल 70 साल के पेशेंट्स में देखते हैं कि कार्टिलेज बिल्कुल खत्म हो गया तो फिर अगर मीन्स दवाइयों से कुछ नहीं हो रहा है या कार्टिलेज नहीं हम प्रोड्यूस कर पा रहे हैं बहुत मुश्किल होता है तो फिर ज्वाइंट रिप्लेसमेंट सर्जरी के लिए हम जाते हैं क्योंकि इससे आपकी डेली जो एक्टिविटी है वो सारी हेम्पर होती है राइट और रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस जो है वो इन्फ्लामेशन है वो उसमें इन्फ्लामेशन होगी इन्फ्लामेशन कैसे होगी आपने देखा है इन्फ्लामेशन में हमारा इम्यून सिस्टम बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट रोल प्ले करता है और इन्फ्लामेशन फिजियोलॉजिकल भी होती है और पैथोलॉजिकल भी फिजियोलॉजिकल हमारी बॉडी के लिए चाहिए रिपेयरिंग प्रोसेस में चाहिए बाउंड हीलिंग में चाहिए बट जब भी पैथोलॉजिकल हो जाती है पैथोलॉजिकल मीन्स जहाँ पे नहीं चाहिए वहाँ पे इन्फ्लामेशन हो रही है तो इसमें क्या होता है रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस या ऑटो इम्यून डिसऑर्डर ऑटो इम्यून जैसे इसके वर्ड से ही पता लगता है ऑटो इम्यून कि अपने आप हमें जरूरत नहीं है अभी इम्यून सिस्टम के आ, काम की बट वो एक्टिवेट होके हमारे बॉडी के सेल को डिस्ट्रॉय कर रहा है तो इस केस में आ, जो आपका ज्वाइंट्स में जो है वहां पर ये किल करना शुरू कर देगा आपके सेल्स को और कार्टिलेज नहीं बनेगा इन्फ्लामेटरी काफी ज्यादा सेल्स वहां पर इकट्ठे हो जाएंगे ज्वाइंट्स पेन होगा और इसमें हम फिर क्या कैसी दवाइयाँ देते हैं इम्यूनोसप्रेसिव देते हैं अभी दवाइयों की बात मैं नहीं कर रहा बट रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस में इन्फ्लामेशन का रोल है गाउटी अर्थराइटिस में भी इन्फ्लामेशन है बट गाउटी अर्थराइटिस में मेटाबॉलिज्म की वजह से होती है जो प्यूरिन का मेटाबोलिज्म है यूरिक एसिड जब डिपॉजिट हो जाएगा तो उसमें हम पेशेंट को बोलते हैं कि अपनी डाइट कंट्रोल करो यूरिक एसिड की हमारे पास दवाइयाँ हैं जो कि यूरिक एसिड की प्रोडक्शन को कम करती हैं यूरिक एसिड के आ, इसको एक्सक्रीशन को बढ़ाती हैं तो वो हमारा गाउट उसको हम गाउट बोलते हैं तो ये मेनली इस तरह के हमारे अर्थराइटिस हैं इटियोलॉजी वही है जो मैं बोल रहा था कि जेनेटिक फैक्टर्स हैं इसमें ऑफ कोर्स बट जेनेटिक फैक्टर का ये मतलब नहीं कि आपके दादा या आपके पापा या मम्मा को किसी को भी अगर रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस है तो आप पहले से ही डर जाओ कि अरे अब तो मुझे होना ही है ऐसा नहीं है 
बिल्कुल बहुत कम चांसेस होते हैं जेनेटिक फैक्टर बट जो इन्वायरमेंटल चेंजेस यस ऑफकोर्स अगर आप के घर में है तो आपको केयरफुल ज्यादा रहना है केयरफुल कैसे रहना है आपको पता है कि लाइफस्टाइल या इन्वायरमेंटल चेंजेस क्या क्या ट्रिगर हैं और ये जो ट्रिगर है स्मोकिंग जो मैं बोल रहा था या लैक ऑफ एक्सरसाइज ये ट्रिगर सिर्फ रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस के नहीं है ये सभी बीमारियों के हैं स्मोकिंग एक सिर्फ रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस का ट्रिगर नहीं है बहुत सारी बीमारियों के ट्रिगर है तो वही बात आ जाती है कि आजकल वो फास्ट फूड खाना या जो हम लोग टेस्ट के पीछे भागते हैं पहले बाहर बहुत कम लोग खाना खाते थे बट अब बाहर का ट्रेंड बन गया है आपके पास वो एप्स आ गई हैं स्विगी जोमेटो तो हम लोग क्या करते हैं फटाफट आज खाना बनाने का मन नहीं है फटाफट स्विगी से ऑर्डर कर दो जोमेटो से ऑर्डर कर दो और वो खाने में टेस्टी भी फूड लगते हैं तो आप उनके फिर हैबिट बन जाती है आपकी आप जब भी थोड़ा बहुत कुछ मीन्स किसी का बर्थडे है किसी का कुछ है तो आप फटाफट ऑर्डर कर देते हो बट उनकी जो प्रेपरेशन अगर आप देखोगे कि किस तरह वो खाना बनाया जाता है क्या क्या वो कौन कौन सी डाइज यूज कर लेते हैं हम नहीं कह सकते और यही सब प्रॉब्लम है कि सीरियस डिजीज लाइक कैंसर जो डेवलप हो रहा है वो भी मैं मानता हूँ कि ये जो खाने में जो डाई और कलर और ये सब यूज करते हैं ये सब सारी ये बीमारियां कैंसर आजकल चालीस पैंतालीस पचास साल में शुरू हो गया तो इसलिए जो जेनेटिक सस्पेक्टिवल हैं और जो हमारे इन्वायरमेंटल चेंजेस हो रहे हैं पॉल्यूशन हमारा बढ़ रहा है काफी ज्यादा तो पॉल्यूशन की वजह से भी और जेनेटिक फैक्टर की वजह से ये हमारा रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस डिजीज डेवलप कर देता है ओबिसिटी वन ऑफ द मेजर रीजन है क्योंकि ओबिसिटी बियर एंड टीयर कर सकता है ज्वाइंट्स पे किसी का वेट बहुत ज्यादा है तो ज्वाइंट पे उसके बहुत ज्यादा प्रेशर पड़ेगा और ज्वाइंट पे प्रेशर बढ़ेगा तो कार्टिलेज जो है वो आपका ये होगा तो ये धीरे धीरे क्या होगा ये घिसना शुरू हो जाएंगे आपस में और फिर उठना बैठना मुश्किल हो जाएगा और आप इमेजिन कर सकते हो रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस तो किसी भी एज में हो जाता है तो आप जस्ट आप इमेजिन कर सकते हो किसी के घर में अगर मान लो कोई ब्रेड अर्नर है कोई एक ही है जो जॉब करता है और वो पर्सन रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस हो जाता है उसको तो कितनी प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट होती है मतलब आप अपनी डेली जो लाइफ एक्टिविटीज है वो नहीं कर पाते हो आप क्योंकि आपका मूवमेंट से ही हमारी बॉडी मूवमेंट वाले काम है हमारे तो मूवमेंट अगर नहीं कर पा रहे हो तो हाउ मच इट अफेक्टेड तो इसलिए जरूरी है कि हम डायग्नोस अगर किसी को हो गया तो डायग्नोसिस बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है डायग्नोस करना और करेक्ट डायग्नोसिस कि ये नहीं कि आ, किसी को ज्वाइंट की पेन हुई आपने बोला कि हाँ आप ना क्या करो कैल्शियम की गोलियां खा लो अरे पहले ये तो वेरीफाई करो कि इसको ज्वाइंट में जो प्रॉब्लम हो रही है उसके ज्वाइंट में क्या सूजन आ रही है गर्म है ज्वाइंट या क्या बोलते हैं उसको फीवर आ रहा है उसके लैब टेस्ट क्या है तो मतलब ये गलतियां होती हैं हमारी तो उससे क्या होता है लेट डायग्नोसिस होती है किसी को ज्वाइंट प्रॉब्लम हुई यहाँ तो विटामिन काले ये दूध पिया कर तो थोड़ा बहुत ज्वाइंट्स के पेन्स इग्नोर करते हैं तो इग्नोर करने की वजह से क्या होता है अगर रिमेटोइड अर्थेराइटिस है तो रिमेटोइड अर्थेराइटिस आपको पता है वो इन्फ्लामेशन बॉडी में बढ़ती जाएगी और फिर बहुत सीवियर उसमें प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगी और जितना हम लेट डायग्नोस करते हैं फिर डॉक्टर को क्या करना पड़ता है स्टीरोइड चलाने हैं तो स्टीरोइड भी हाई डोज पे और आपको पता है सबको पता है स्टीरोइड हाई डोज पे या इन अप्रोप्रिएट यूज ऑफ स्टीरोइड हमारी बॉडी को कितना हार्म करता है तो फिर आपने वो तो डॉक्टर ने कंट्रोल कर ली रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस प्रॉब्लम पर उसकी वजह से कुछ और प्रॉब्लम शुरू हो गई तो ऐसे फिर एक प्रॉब्लम दूसरी प्रॉब्लम और फिर हमारी बॉडी पूरी ये हो जाती है तो इसलिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एजुकेट करना लोगों को और सही टाइम पे डायग्नोसिस ऑफ कोर्स आई एडमिट की एलोपैथी में हमारे पास कोई क्योर नहीं है डिजीज का बट वो बोलते हैं कि जितने साल भी हमें जीना है तो विद क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ ये तो हाउ टू मैनेज तो मैनेजमेंट हमारे पास दवाइयां हैं जिनसे बहुत अच्छे से मैनेज आप डिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस के पेशेंट्स को अगर आप सही से डायग्नोस करते हो ट्रीटमेंट देते हो तो उसको डेली वो अपने अपने काम भी कर लेगा सब कुछ करेगा कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आती है तो क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ का एक ये है एपिडेमोलॉजी मैंने बोला था कि वोमेंट्स जो है वो मोर प्रोन है और एस्ट्रोजम्स की वजह से वो मोर प्रोन है बट ये भी है कि वोमेंस के जो हार्मोन्स है वो उनको काफी चीजों से प्रोटेक्ट भी करते हैं और डिजीज से तो वो भी चीज है 
तो वोमेन्स आर मोर प्रोन तो वोमेन्स को ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम्स रहती हैं रिमेटाइड अर्थराइटिस की ऑस्टो अर्थराइटिस बहुत कॉमन प्रॉब्लम है ओल्डर एज की रिमेटाइड अर्थराइटिस मैंने बताया किसी भी एज में हो सकता है तो ये एपिडेमियोलॉजी है पैथोजेनेसिस पैथोजेनेसिस में ऑस्टो अर्थराइटिस की पैथोजेनेसिस में आपको इन्फ्लामेशन के बारे में ज्यादा नहीं लिखना आपको समझना चाहिए कि ऑस्टो में क्या होता है कार्टिलेज घस रहा है कार्टिलेज खत्म हो रहा है तो फिर आपके ज्वाइंट्स मीन्स रगड़ रहे हैं आपस में फिर पेन होगा ज्वाइंट्स ऊपर प्रैक्टिस होगा कि साउंड आ रहा है पेन चलने पे पेन होगा जब रेस्ट करेंगे तो पेन नहीं होगा तो ये सारी आप पैथोफिजियोलॉजी आप ऑस्टियो की अगर आपको एग्जाम में पूछते हैं तो ऑस्टो की अगर अर्थराइटिस की पूछते हैं तो आपको सारे अर्थराइटिस में थोड़ा 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 करके लिख सकते हो बट अगर स्पेसिफिक अर्थराइटिस की आती है तो आपको उसके अकॉर्डिंगली वो पैथोजेनेसिस लिखनी है ऐसे रिमेटाइड अर्थराइटिस का अब आप ये ऑटो इम्यून डिसऑर्डर है अगर आपको अच्छे से इम्यून सिस्टम समझ आ गया है तो आप जो भी ऑटो इम्यून डिजीज है चाहे एस है सिस्टमेटिक ल्यूकस एरिथ्रोमेटस है टाइप वन डायबिटीज है चाहे रिमेटाइड अर्थराइटिस है जो भी ऑटो इम्यून हमारे चाहे मल्टीपल स्क्लोरिस है ये सारी ऑटो इम्यून डिसऑर्डर जो भी हैं आप इनके एक इनके कॉमन मैकेनिज्म है कॉमन मैकेनिज्म मीन्स इम्यून सिस्टम जो है वो हमारा वैसे ही काम करता है बस कहाँ पे फर्क आता है कि ओके okay, अगर आप लिख रहे हो रिमेटाइड अर्थराइटिस का तो आपको ज्वाइंट्स के बारे में लिखना है आपको इन्फ्लोमेशन एम एम डैमेज ये बारे में लिखना है पर ये वाला जो पार्ट है आपका टी सेल्स बी सेल्स वो तो सबके लिए सेम है समझ रहे तो ये जब ये हमारे चेंजेस होते हैं जब आप ब्लड टेस्ट करोगे सीआरपी बड़ा होगा पेन होगा एथरलजिया होगा एक्स्ट्राटिकुलर साइन बट रिमोटाइड एथेराइटस अगर आप ट्रीट नहीं करते हो टाइम से मैनेज नहीं करते हो तो ये क्योंकि आपको पता है इन्फ्लामेटरी डिसऑर्डर इन्फ्लामेटरी ऑटो इम्यून डिसऑर्डर है तो ये पूरी बॉडी के अदर ऑर्गन्स को भी डैमेज करता है तभी मैंने आपको बताया कि रिमोटाइड अर्थेराइटिस कोई सौ दो टाइप का है क्योंकि ये सारी बॉडी को अफेक्ट कर रहा है वेस्कुलाइटस अलग है इसका अलग है इस पॉइंट ऑर्गन्स का अलग है तो दैट्स वाई इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू डायग्नोज एंड उसको आप ट्रीट करें <coughs> तो ये है आ, दूसरा ये है कि जो गाउटी वाला है वो आपका डिसऑर्डर ऑफ यूरिन मेटाबॉलिज्म है तो वो आपका हाइपर यूरिसीमिया जब डिपॉजिट हो जाता है उसके बाद फिर इन्फ्लामेटरी तो अगर आप यूरिक एसिड का प्रोडक्शन रोक दोगे या डाइट मॉडिफिकेशन बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट रोल प्ले करती है गाउटी में तो डाइट मॉडिफिकेशन और ये सब से आप ये बच सकते हो और डाइट डाइट के बारे में ये है आयुर्वेद कहता है कि कौन सी डाइट जो पेशेंट्स ज्वाइंट और ये रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटस गाउटी हुआ चाहे ऑस्टियो हुआ तो उनमें कुछ कुछ डाइट्स जो हैं वो एक जो उसको हम बोलते हैं कि टाइम के हिसाब से चीजें खानी चाहिए जैसे आयुर्वेद में कहा जाता है कि दही जो है वो रात को मत खाइए दही का निषेध है दही मत खाइए रात को तो अगर पर्सन को रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस है गाउटी है जो भी है अगर आप मीन्स वो चीजें यूज कर रहे हैं तो उससे फिर प्रॉब्लम हो सकती है तो वो सब चीजें हैं ये टोमेटो का यूज भी ये सब के लिए अच्छा नहीं रहता डायग्नोसिस uh, सिम्टम uh, के बेसिस पे मैंने बताया कि सिम्टम के बेसिस पे हमें इतना सेंस हो जाता है कि ये इन्फ्लामेटरी है या नॉन इन्फ्लामेटरी है कौन से ज्वाइंट इन्वॉल्व हैं और पेशेंट्स uh, क्या बोलता है पेशेंट्स अगर बोलता है कि मुझे सुबह उठ के स्टिफनेस होती है और फिर मैं जब चलता हूँ तो फिर मेरे को आराम मिल जाता है तो आपको सेंस हो जाना चाहिए इट्स ए केस ऑफ रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस अगर पेशेंट बोलता है कि मुझे ना चलने पर दर्द होता है जब मैं आराम करता हूँ तो सब ठीक हो जाता है तो मीन्स इससे ऑस्टियो अर्थराइटिस फिर लैब टेस्ट हैं ई फिर आप ज्वाइंट्स को देख के भी पता चल जाता है कि इन्फ्लामेशन है या नहीं है और बाकी ये ब्लड टेस्ट हैं ई एस आर रिट्रोसाइड सेडिमेंटेशन रेट रिमेटोइड फैक्टर मैं ये कह रहा था कि रिमेटोइड फैक्टर नॉर्मल में भी पॉजिटिव आ जाता है उसका ये मतलब नहीं कि रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस है आपको सिम्टम देख के पूरी इमेजिंग देख के तब यू कैन से कि इसको रिमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस है या ये वाला अर्थराइटिस है राइट और ट्रीटमेंट ट्रीटमेंट हम डिजीज मॉडिफाइंग रिमेटाइड एंटी रिमेटिक ड्रग्स देते हैं जो कि इम्यूनो सुप्रेसिव है क्योंकि इम्यून सिस्टम हमारा हाइपर एक्टिवेट हो चुका है क्योंकि उसने गलत सेंस कर लिया है तो हम उसको सुप्रेस करते हैं तो अगर हम सुप्रेस करते हैं इम्यून सिस्टम को तो क्या होता है कि जो वो पेशेंट्स क्या होते हैं 
प्रोन होते हैं इन्फेक्शियस डिजीज के लिए राइट तो उनको बायोलॉजिकल एजेंट्स हम यूज करते हैं जो पेशेंट्स रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं करते क्योंकि बायोलॉजिकल एजेंट्स जो है वो कॉस्टली होते हैं एंटीबॉडीज जो होती हैं पर अब हम इनके जेनरिक वर्जन भी बना रहे हैं बायोलॉजिकल एजेंट्स के जिनको हम बायोसिमिलर बोलते हैं तो बायोसिमिलर जो कि कम प्राइस के पेशेंट्स को मिल सकते हैं नसेड हम यूज करते हैं जेंटिन ऑक्सीडेज हम यूरिक एसिड के लिए यूज करते हैं और फिजिकल थेरेपी और सर्जरी so this is uh, all about any anything any queries now open for your queries <coughs> go ahead hello oh. yes krishan <coughs> manushi priyanshu abhishek anyone has put it sir any idea about you all are very much worry about dead sheet i think right yes any, sir any, any, any queries yes, regarding arthritis apart from dead sheet dead sheet as i told you i will ask the examination department today so i will inform but uh, uh, my uh, concern is query on arthritis so you you have to be diagnosed uh, and i think if uh, uh, your uh, uh, grandfather grandmother someone have a joint problem so you should have a little bit knowledge to sense what type of arthritis whether that uh, they are uh, getting the treatment is right or not uh, so all these things you can uh, verify your knowledge whether uh, you are able to do or not to do right anything anything gujwal priyanshu asutosh mansi the thing so uh, uh, next uh, uh, tomorrow we will discuss about cancer so your unit 4 will be completed right then uh, day after tomorrow we will start unit 5 that is your last unit and in last unit uh, we will complete in 3 or 4 days so your syllabus will be completed right mean time if anyone after the completion of syllabus if we get time so if any topic you want to repeat so we will repeat or if you want any discussion we will do that okay any anything else so if there is no queries uh, nothing so thank you very much uh, have a good day thank you sir thank you sir Thank you so much.